saute sur l'eau. Can somebody begin to speak in diverse tongues at the church now? Can you begin to tell him? Can you begin to speak now? As I leave the musicians to play, can you begin to speak to God now? Can you begin to speak to God now? This is a prophetic time for you. Can you lift up your voice and make a decrease to the heavens? Esaka pala kapala na pala bosa. Ekapeli ana pala kapa. Ezusa kapala kapata. Esaka pala kapala. Adarao, 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 adarao. So. Clap for the Lord, please. Let us have our seats. I want to recognize the presence of the Lord Himself, so that I know that the Lord has been here since the beginning of the conference on Friday. 
the Lord has not missed a session. By the grace of God, I've been saved for you. As all I knew, I've been saved for 51 years. I now I know how to detect the presence of God. God has been here since Friday. If you have not been here, talk. You all I know my responsibility. I know what is not my responsibility. But the Lord has been here since Friday. He has been in full attendance since the beginning of this conference. And every session has been more than just a session. Every session has been deep, wide, broad. It's been greater than great. And I've been so blessed, so blessed, so blessed. This morning when I was praying, I was using some of those terrific points to pray for myself to my God. I have told you that these are the last of the last days. And I have told you that steadfastness is of the essence in these last days. That Sunday, Sunday Christianity will not be enough. I thank the Lord for the man of God that the Lord has been using. I've been privileged to have known him for so many decades. In 1979, after my youth service, when I came to this town, the fellowship I was attending by the grace of God, he was a member prominent member of that fellowship. God has been using him as a vessel of honor. And this is the last session. By the grace of God, nothing will remain in your life that the Lord will not touch. Whatever you have not been able to handle, the corporate anointing in the Holy Ghost will handle it. Make yourself meek. Make yourself teachable. Make yourself hungry. To the glory of God, I invite the man of God, Evangelist Isaac Omole. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please be seated. Let me start again by acknowledging my host and hostess, Reverend Emmanuel Lucet and his wife, Reverend Emmanuel said, is an extraordinary Christian. And God has used him over the years to be a blessing to my life. The details of which I may not be able to stand before you to tell. Because he himself will not like it. This church also has meant so much to me. By the nature of my ministry, my ministry many times can be very offensive. I've had people in this town who took on me direct because they attended my crusade and when they gave their lives to Christ, the family could not manage the consequences. As I stand before you, I have many court cases hanging on my neck. But there's a lawyer in this church who accepts to take my case and he won all cases for me. By the nature of my ministry and person, when there is even peace somewhere, I get there and cause trouble. Cultists who gave their lives to Christ in my crusades 
and they were leaders of different gangs. The gang decided to take on me. By the nature of my ministry, I can be very offensive. Many times, I just come out like a tiger. So I thank God for people in this church who at various times have been a blessing to my life and ministry. By coming here this morning, it's not necessarily because I'm invited. I have been here uninvited many times because it is my way of paying a little out of what I owe this church. And by the privilege I have to address this conference over these past two days, and today is the third. I have had to point to you things that challenge me. Because as I meditated on the assignment I was given here, I, I came in contact with certain facts that baffle me. I'm preaching to you what I have preached to myself. That the ego is the strongest of birds. And it derives its power by its lifestyle. That the ego is monogamous. Ego doesn't sleep, it doesn't mate with another ego throughout its lifetime. It keeps to a mate. For that reason, ego is able to conserve his strength. The Bible speaks of Ephraim as one that has messed up his life, that strangers have devoured, strange women have devoured her strength. As you keep changing partners and going about, you should change your strength. And the ego lives up to 50 years. The lifespan in Nigeria, average life expectancy in Nigeria is 55. And the ego goes on to live for 50 years. And the ego is so strong that it can carry a goat and carry it away and fly it away. Ego will carry a prey that is 20 times his body weight. And that the ego does not come to puberty until three years. Only in the fourth year, the ego matures to begin to lay egg. He spends three years to build strength. Of all birds, even birds of prey, the ego is the only one that spent three years to build strength before it begins to reproduce. The bones are like iron and steel. The ego is not in a hurry to do anything. The ego will lay only one egg, sometimes two, at most three. The ego is not in a hurry to mass produce. In that way, you dissipate energy. The ego's vision is the best of all the creatures of God. The ego can sight his prey over five miles. And the vision of the ego is the best. It's so sharp. And when the ego is going for its prey, it goes for it over a distance of five miles. And it does not look to the right or to the left. The ego keeps to his vision. I have stood here this past one or two days to appreciate those of you who have identified with our vision in this place and you have kept with it. Thank you. This
morning, I'm going to zero in on the arrival of power because the ego is about power. In terms of purity, there is a species, there are very many species of ego. There is a species of ego, it's called white ego. It's entirely white. There is another one that is called sea ego. The sea ego is white on the head and is white on the feet. White on the head where his vision is. White on the legs where he catches the prey. The Bible says, does not nature teach you? The white ego, or the ego that the belly is white. Is white. The white ego is the sea ego. The sea ego of all egos is the strongest and the most powerful. And it eats only white flesh. The whiter, the better. The whiter, the stronger. Jesus took his disciples to the mountain of transfiguration and the Bible says as he prayed, his garment began to glow and become white. The white ego of all the egos has a distinction of strength. The sea ego, listen, listen. The sea ego eats only white flesh, it eats only fish. Nothing more. The sea eagle flies the longest and is white. It can fly across the Atlantic Ocean in search of food. It is only fish. It can take off from Lagos and fly across the Atlantic Ocean until it gets to New York without patching anywhere. The sea eagle has the strongest energy to go the longest distance you can imagine. How can an eagle... And the eagle uses his span of wings to propel itself to mount up and uses the other feathers to adjust direction. The other feathers, he will adjust the other feathers to adjust direction. If you want to go this way or go that way, the eagle can turn within a second. He uses the, the, the wings to move on and to climb, but the other feathers to change direction. The sea eagle, there are eagles that eat only snakes. Unfortunately, you even imagine when it landed on a snake, the snake will be biting the legs, and it has no feather on the leg. Yet it will carry it. Nothing has impressed me about the eagle's life like its power. I'm a man who is in love with power. I'm a man who understands power. I'm a man who appreciates power. As a matter of fact, there is nothing I know better than power. Because of my exposure, I walk among witches. I walk among babalawos. I walk among cultists. I walk among the most dangerous person. I walk among armed robbers. My walk puts me, my place of work puts me in danger and risk at all times. If I had not been a, a user, by the grace of God, of power in this town, I would have been dead. I prayed before I came here this morning that you will receive power. People who are not hungry for power and are giving, they usually lose it. Since they have no desire for it. And if you don't have a strong appetite for power this morning, power is never given like a lagesh. If you are not hungry for power, if you are not desperate for power, if you still feel okay the way you are, there is nothing to benefit in this service. I have not come with anything that you can take. It is the desperation for power. Look at our politics. 
and the ability to access power. Look at how much the politicians have to put in to access power. Look at how much money they spend to access power. Look at how far they go to access power. A man was arrested in a roundabout in Oshobo in the night by vigilante with a, a, with a bucket of human blood that he was bathing with at night. You know how many people would have been killed to be able to get a bucket of, of blood just to access power. Human sacrifices is not a big deal in the search for power. Power is obtained at all cost because when you get power, there is no more cost you pay for in life. Whatever you don't have, power gives it to you. The arrival of power is about the center point of our meditation, if you've been here the last two days, you'll understand certain principles about the search, the quest, and the receipt of power by candidates of power. Like Elisha wanted to receive power from Elijah. You saw the procedure in the book of Second Kings. People in power always want to drop certain people who are not serious. That's why Elijah will say, would you stay here? I'm coming. Elijah said, no, let's go. In the journey of discipleship, the Bible says, as they walked and talked, They appeared unto them, carried out of fire. And the wild wind moving between them and separated them, and then picked Elijah and was going. Then Elisha cried, My father. I asked here. In the past 25 years of Nigerian Christianity, we have been taught not to regard fathers. And I don't know an anointing that works that way. In our journey, as they walked and talked, there is a time you are here. There is a time you are here. There is a time we let you go and pick. In discipleship, there is a time you are here. You are watching me. It's where I put my leg. You put your leg. But that journey gets to a point when I now say, come this way. We are now mates. If there is a pit, we see it together. If there is a snake, we see it together. We, we now let you see what we see. When you are here, you only see me. But it comes to a point Having traveled with me for such a distance, I cannot trust you because I saw that you did not run away. You did not run away. I have seen things that should scare both of us. You did not run away. So I said, look, come. We are now mates. And if we go up to a point, I now put you in front of me because I'm no longer afraid. And then I take another person. Why? He also takes. I bet take what I me. As they walked and talked. The arrival of power. Elisha took his own garment. The arrival of power. There must be no mix-up. The new one must not mix with the old one. Elisha took his garment and tore it and screamed, my father, my father. 
the state of fatherlessness in Nigerian Christianity. The church is paying for it by becoming so odious and controversial. And we have given back to Belials and vagabonds. Did I tell you that Reverend Ali once called me one day and asked me, where are you? I told him. He said, I should come. The Reverend Emmanuel said is in his house. Then I went there. There's a young lady who came to report her husband to Reverend Ali and said, my husband is a pastor. He married me three months ago. And only three months after this wedding, he has driven me out of the house and I picked a girl from the choir to replace me in his house. And since then, I've been going about in this town. And yeah, I did wedding three months ago, church wedding. Man of God. Then Reverend Ali called me and called Reverend Emmanuel said, Tori awano lo ku ni agba. Iyen te ba gba. Subon eyin ko le yan wa sagba. Eyin ko le fu wa lojo ori. Eyin de ko le fu wa ni riri. I got to Reverend Ali's house and saw the girl. And the girl was asked to narrate what happened. And we saw the young man, the pastor, the general overseer. And the lady spoke and said, this is what happened. And three of us asked the man, is that true? He said, yes. She said, yes. Then Reverend Ali said, what you have done is wrong. Then the man got up and was asking us. And was doing hand like this to us. Are we the one that, that called him? Are we the one that brought him into ministry? I've known Reverend said for up to 40 years. I've never seen him weeping. Except sometimes when he is preaching in Shiloh, and the 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 passion of what he's saying takes hold of every fabric of his life, he could begin to cry and sob. That day, Reverend Oset was weeping, and I was asking him, "What happened? Why are you weeping?" He said, "This boy used to be my student in Poli. He's the one doing like this. Are you? Are you the one? Are you? Are you? Are you the one that?" Then I took my Bible. I said, I'm going. But from today, now, uh -huh. <laughs> now I said that from today, your ministry in this town is closed. Aratoba wu yini keda ema cross line wa. I think I do have that call me to ministry. Ah, you, you close down my ministry. That day, the news went round his members. We want not to close church wa. Then people were asking, what happened? One one pastor, one lawyer, you see, I want to go to the GRA. Want to close church, you They got to church that Sunday. Reverend, you may not know that his assistant pastor is a member of my choir now. I asked of his general overseer. He told me that the general overseer, Monday, Lone Seni, Lou, Lone, Lone.
Toro ba de vita ati so no la ati so. Se ri gbagbo ten se ni sin. Si oluku luku se. Wo? E je ke e ma je kin ha le mo yin. Yo ba ni iwon ni won la ki mo ko se ni ti o mo won are. Elisha said, my father, my father. Reverend Lee called me one day. I said he wants to give me a gift. And what was it? Give me a garment. Only king be one, no jum. I want to go to the train. I want to go to the train. I want to leave. My father, my father. Then the Bible says, Elijah dropped his mantle. And I told you yesterday that Elijah had been recognized as somebody that pours water on the hand of Elijah. By extension, a five months. People who have alienated themselves from primary duties and services in church. Some of the ten things we ask you to do is, is your, for your own benefit. You use it to energize and strengthen your spiritual muscle and reflexes. There is nothing you are doing in church for me. There is nothing in church you are doing for the man of God, you do it for yourself. You are doing it for yourself. We shouldn't be pleading and begging. If you have left us in the position and you do not contest and you do not make us even doubt some of the times what's going on. As people rise up from the congregation and assault our anointing. If you let us stay where God put us, we will be happy together to serve. We will also, now, this mantle that Elijah was going with, say one was alone. Most things that God has endowed certain of our leaders, apostles, in the apostolic and the prophets with, they never went to heaven with it. They always drop it. This morning, the arrival of power. Impartation of power comes in many ways, but I will highlight three or four if I have time. Number one, it comes, listen, 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 listen. It comes by prophetic deposit. I once had a friend if he sees you first time, he'll call your name. Tell you where you were born and your date of birth. We finished the meeting and we're looking for a document. We didn't know where it was. And instead of searching and searching, he just said, bro, this is your file. From this meeting this morning, I've prayed to God. That God will raise people who will be seers. If you know what that means. You're coming by the same spirit, but if you are a prophet, if you are a healing evangelist, if you are a teacher, but, yeah, but by the same spirit. If you are an evangelist, but, yeah, if you are an apostle, take your own. In this service this morning, and let nobody rule himself out, Moses told the whole of Israel, he said, oh, 
that the whole of Israel were prophets. I pray in this church this morning that nobody will go away without being gifted. Let nobody rule himself out. On the day of Pentecost, nobody was ruled out. Everybody received the gift of tongues. Other gifts later, healing, they came. Prophecy came later. Miracles came later. But, and we may not all be prophets. We may not all be seers. We may not all be healing evangelists. But the fact that on the day of Pentecost, or Caesar. Reverend, my grandson, Jenyo, he had a son. Four year old. At what time did we realize that the child is dumb? At the age of two, Kole Soro. Reverend Moti Laugu Kojani no Ayemi. Omo mi ule soro. Oro ni munta. They live in Tanzania on the mission field. Omo mi ule soro. Oro ni mufi jeni. So the mother asked Jenny's wife to bring the, the boy. They brought the boy. The boy stayed with us for many years. Kole soro sa mukba dua reverend adua tonle aladua omo mi usoro. We took this boy to the teaching hospital. There are these voice doctors and speech doctors. They examine the organ. The speech organ, the voice box, they say they can't find anything that is wrong with this boy. So we came back to the house. One day the doctor recalled the mother and said, Bring the boy. Now that boy will be, at that time, the boy will be four or six. Four. Three. And the doctor asked the mother, Where do you say you live? He said, we live in Tanzania. What language do they speak where you are? We speak Swahili. I preach in Swahili. The school, Swahili is the lingua franca of Tanzania. That's the language they speak in school. So what language do you speak to this your son when you are at home? He said, we speak English. We also speak Yoruba. The doctor said, that is the problem. When you get home for the next three months, don't speak any other language. Decide what language you'll be speaking in your house and let everybody stick to it. So we made a law in our house that we will only be speaking English. And we spoke English only for three months. And my grandson began to speak. So unto sele ni pe igba to gbo eleyi to gbo eleyi to gbo eleyi ko mo eyi ti yo lo ba kuku da ke Now he speaks <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Before uh, my mother passed on, this boy could speak English, he could speak Yoruba, and speak Ekit dialect. Ode she was Wahili. Yoruba. Elei come in here, come on, sir. Sir, it's a day where we're going to hear and only. Me only saw you. A lot of magic can control that. Oh, Cynthia, you be. 
You'll be a book. You'll be embarrassment. A me sorrow sorrow. Omo mi uli sorrow. O ya udi. Beki so di. The things that God has not written, which is being manipulated and enforced upon you negatively because of certain adversities and certain ignorance. Sir, you know certain Japanese soldiers were arrested recently in Philippines. They've been in the bush. They fought during the Second World War that ended in 1945. And their platoon was scattered. And they escaped into the forest of Guam in the island in Philippines. And only recently, two of them were discovered. Poru or Noda. Poru or Noda said he did not know that the Second World War had ended. And when he saw men, he ran. The, he had worn only the same garment. Help me calculate since 1945. Eating wild fruits and pig. Coming to neighborhood to steal cow, steal sheep and go and, and kill. Fishermen saw him across a river and beckoned to him that the war has ended. He said, you are conning me to capture me. We are the How many times we are still fighting a war that has ended? When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. He said he did not know that the war had ended since 1945. December no capture. What he was eighty. He has spent half, more than half of his life still fighting a war that has ignorance. He let us know that he was not the only one. There were very many, but they are the only two alive that were found in the forest. They died because they were ignorant. I saw a lesson of commitment in Hiru or another when they asked him to come and come with his weapons. And asked him to surrender his weapons. And he said that he will only lay down his weapon if he can see his unit commander. I learned obedience and allegiance in Japanese army. He said he will only surrender if he can see his unit commander. They went around the whole of Tokyo and they were looking soldiers in the forest and he refused to surrender his weapon he said unless I see you that one came and spoke to him and introduced himself yeah, you remember I am your unit commander then he took salute and said I obeyed you in, in war I will also obey you in peace and he handed over his weapons to his unit and took a salute I submitted to you in war. I will also submit to you. And you only I trust. People who took commitment to another level. I'm still talking about leadership and followership and fatherhood. 
and the arrival of power through that channel. A man cannot give what he doesn't have. A father will give what fathers have. A leader will give what leaders have and give to the followers if they are still following. Power didn't come on the day of Pentecost and then we were going to people's house who didn't come to church. If you didn't come to church, you didn't come to church. Have you ever seen power being taken to a person at home? In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14, Paul told Timothy how power comes and the impartation procedure. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of presbytery. Impartation is given by prophecy. Impartation is given by proclaimed words. And nobody is beyond that. Jesus, as he was Jesus, was brought to the temple, baby Jesus. A man who was very old, Simeon, carried Jesus in his hand. The Bible says that this man was told he would not see death until he see Jesus. So he was living by prophecy. Fever came and left him. Kuro came and left him. Whatever bubonic plague at his time came and left him. As a sin left him, death left him because he was waiting for an assignment. Let me tell you this, that God is committed to your assignment and will preserve you till it is done. <laughs> he it was who collected Jesus in his hand and spoke into the life of Jesus. Oh, sorry, you know, a baby Jesus. He spoke into the life of the baby. Let somebody speak into your life. Don't grow to such a level that nobody speaks into your life. Even Jesus, somebody spoke into his life. Somebody that you will think is junior spiritually. Yes, but to him it was given to speak into his life. How come John the Baptist was the one to baptize Jesus? Excuse me. There are those that God has given assignment to speak into your life. To do things and inject and deposit things in your life. And you must not be resistant. Because some of you have become so suspicious of every spiritual move. Then came Anna, somebody who lived only seven years with a husband. And she's 84. And was waiting in the church, had lived all her lives in the church, came and took baby Jesus and spoke into his life. Tell me anybody in Bible who became anything that was not for spoken into his life. Abraham was told, you will be a father of many nations. They spoke into his life. Paul said, remember the things that have been spoken into your life. If some of you are able to articulate here in this church this morning very many volumes of stuff that have been spoken into your life, either spiritually or in a dream or prophetically, even as I'm speaking here this morning, there will be those that some of the things I'm saying directly apply to you. You can't be aloof here. You can't stay here and be indifferent. We are not in an ordinary meeting. You must recognize the move of God and the day of your visitation. The Bible says that Timothy should not neglect because you have the tendency to neglect. You have a tendency to neglect. And there is nothing you neglect that survives. If you have a wife and you neglect her, if you have a son and you neglect them, I was saying a few days ago, when Muhammad Yusuf started to preach a very dangerous doctrine in Islam that they do not accept uh, Western education, 
Darwin's theory of evolution is controversial to Islam and that Islam does not recognize a number of things and created a certain theology of their own brand and was living by it. BBC came all the way from London to interface with him in Meduguri and sit him down. What is your problem? Voice of America came from the United States and sat Muhammad Yusuf down. What is your problem? Nobody in Nigeria called him to say, what is your problem? How can we help you? You have developed a very strange theology. There are no clerics and, and scholars in Islam that can sit him down and take him on on some of the strange theology that he had come up with. Neither do we have anybody from the Christian side to sit him down. At that time, he was receiving anybody that wanted to talk to him. And his disciples were growing as Boko Haram. While the number of children going to school in Yobe was decreasing, his own disciples were increasing. The number of puppies going to school in Yobe were decreasing by the day. His own number of disciples were increasing and we were watching. Today, Boko Haram is a monster. Anything you neglect grows wild. If you have a car and you neglect it, you won't service it. You need to change the oil. You didn't change the oil. Today, bah. Sir, one day you will kick it. It will not happen. You show me a student who neglect lectures. Neglect not the gift in thee. It's already there. In Second Timothy, is it one six? Second Timothy. Wherefore I put it in remembrance. Stay up. Stay up. If you put sugar in a tea, you drop it there and drank it. It will not be sweet. Not because there is no sugar there, but because you did not. Stir up the gift of God which is in thee. We have put the sugar there in the tea. Stir it up. You'll be hearing messages 10 years, 20 years. Stay, wake up yourself. I have a member in uh, Ojaya. A child fell into a well. They brought the child out and the child was lifeless. Then somebody said, there is a, a woman in this our area. It's a dickness in Baba Molen's church. Go and call him. Go and call her. No work we do what they do. 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 He was not allowed to do the Tori Bugua to go in his article and one pastor Equa, who go on and walk over the war by Tato Magbelosi Beria Ground. He was not allowed to do the one in Dickness, ne, Abbey Dickness, Sebi Dickness, ne, Nature to Babomole. I joined a lot of over Cabo Mogon, Joey Dickness, because it's a no lab bear, could you? It's a no lab bear, could you? Dickness. Rolo, <laughs> 
You never know. At the end of the day, you are not the one to do it. After this meeting, if there is a trouble in your neighborhood, go out and address it. He said, you will lay hand on the sick and they will recover. That's what the Bible says. Now, some of you will be saying, suppose I lay hand and it didn't recover. The Bible says you will lay hand on the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Your part is done. And this person will not be healed unless your part is done. I put it in remembrance. Why are we putting you in remembrance? Because you have this tendency to forget. That you are not, you are more than you look. You are more than you look. It's a bit unfortunate that, that we are the one to put you in remembrance. You are more than what people are saying. You are a vessel. You are a tool. You are gifted. You are talented. It's been prophesied. Prophecies have gone ahead. Even Lenu Bata Bere Soji Nijeta, Ori Sirisi or Ronu Leti Bo, that should now make you to stand up, wake up, tell yourself, Sir, Mulo Wasuni Adosa, Joshua Felix. He's a professor of mathematics. Thank you, sir. You know him. We were the one to minister in that conference. He said, I had ministered and left. I was to take Saturday and Sunday morning when conventions were in. There is the man in charge of protocol. I went with my car, I went with my driver. The hotel where we were staying is very close to the church. I could trek it. So I told him, I said, we, my wife, we can trek to the church. He said, sir, my pastor will be annoyed. That's the job they gave me. So we entered this car. On Saturday, as we finished, we were driving out of the premises of the church. I call his name. You can ask. Felix Aderibi is a professor of mathematics. But he has a church. Now, we are driving out of the premises of the church when the wife stood in front of the church and did like this. I said, Baba Sheon, did you hear that Sheon is dead? And that they have been calling you and you didn't pick call? He said, I cannot pick call. You know we are in the church. He said, well, they've called me. Sheon is dead. The man told his wife. He said, the guest speaker and his wife are already in the car. The place is not far. Let me go and drop them. Then I will come. Inyi Ekiti, those of you who know that area, Inyi Ekiti Ojinosado, the girl is in the body house in Inyi Ekiti, Ojinosado. So the man told his wife, say, wait, let me drop the guest speaker. And then I will come, we will go there. My wife and I sat down in the car, we were listening to the conversation. Then the woman asked the husband, what did you say? The man said, I said. Now the man said, I said. That the guest speaker and his wife, they are already in the car. Let me go and drop them. Then when I come back, we'll go to Inyekiti to address the situation. Then the, man, the woman started screaming outside the church. 
Oh, go go and drop person. The whole church ran out. You know, Shelley. When Baba Seo saw that the crowd had gathered around his car, he said something I will never forget till the Lord comes. Only Mama Seo needs to rule. Me o mori ko, me o simo wa suwa. He said, "Your content for many church in the Jacken she." Did you hear what I said? I don't know how to sing. I don't know how to preach. This is the only work they have given me in this church. Let me do it. Let me do it. And when the man saw that the crowd was not going to even let him go, he engaged the car and started driving away very furiously. Once of my Aurora, we got to the hotel and very quickly, he zoomed, he made a U-turn. He was running back to church. Because the woman was shouting in front of the church. So, he said, I told the guardian in body house to help me take the girl to the hospital. That's all I knew. What I'm hearing now, after service, is that the girl has died. That's the story, sir. Then I said, draw, 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 draw. Sheu Pada. I shouted three times. Sheu because Oju me only mama yen so pe won won fe lo drop eyan. Now one hour ago I was the guest speaker in this meeting. Moti de eyan. They said they want to go and drop person. Moti the person. One hour ago I was the guest speaker here. Now, something has happened now. I've become a person. A mini me on a bar. Now, oh, you mean on Janino, look you around. Pembolo, I like of your moko, love, or giant, Bolova Giancy. Then, but that's all on your mamma, my boomy. The man left to stay up. What is saw me? I do not saw me the person. Oni wa zu ni misa. Abemo. Oni wa zu ni mi. Emma saw me the person. Me o se person. Enreni. Olorun o ni je ko dada kuda The following morning my and all today to wa gbe wa lo fun Sunday morning service and I asked him how about what happened yesterday He said as I was driving into the church premises mama se unu lo tun duro si waju moto pe won ti phone lati yin ekiti pe se won ti laju Mommy reminded me we were there together. The after service, she walked up to me and said, thank you. My dad told me I died yesterday. You recalled me. This service must make a new man out of you. This service must make a new brother out of your life. I read it to you in Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 9. He said, those who come in by the northern gate should go back by the southern gate. Those who came by the southern gate should go back by the northern gate. That nobody must come, go away the way he came. That is the objective of this program. That nobody will be allowed to go back home the way he came. I'm not the one who said it. I read it to you in the Bible. It should not be difficult for you to believe. I read it to you in Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 9. That those who came into the presence of God must not go back the way they came. It should be down to your own determination. I will not go back the way I came. And then the whole of heaven will endorse. 
prophecy. Lay none of hands. The man two implication as we saw in 2 Kings chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter 2, that the man two of power was dropped When Aaron was about to die, God told Moses, take Aaron and his children to Mount Hor, the height of the eagle, and remove the garment of Aaron and put it upon his sons to make sure that there is a, a transfer of power from the father to the son. As we saw play out, when Elijah was going, and Elisha was saying, my father, they gave him garment. They gave him mantle. It played out from the same Old Testament that when Aaron was going, God told Moses to take him and his sons to Mount Hor, one of the highest mountains in Israel. And he should remove the garment of Aaron and put it on his children. And there Aaron died and was buried and taken away. The boys were coming down from the mountain wearing the mantle and the garment of their father. And that's how they entered into the priesthood. In Acts chapter 9 verse 11, chapter 19 verse 11, people came to a meeting like this. And when they were going, they brought handkerchief and touched the garment of Paul. And wherever they went, this mantle was working miracles. I said it here yesterday, that there must be a takeaway from this meeting. You won't go empty. We will put something in your hand that you will go home with. When you get home, if you find sick things around you, let this man to one. Is it there in Acts chapter 19 verse 11? There is a man of God in Ibadan, Reverend Moses Ikemo, Reverend Adebara. Reverend Adebara, fountain of grace. We were doing a meeting like this and they brought man to, we pray on it. And she was heavily pregnant. And the baby was lying like this. The husband told her, let's go to UCH. Let's go to UCH. The husband forced her back. Let's go. They got to UCH. They entered the theater. And the doctor was already wearing the garment for surgery. The nurses were assembling the equipment. The woman remembered that there is a mantle of prayer in the bag she packed and called for it. And somebody gave her. Over that day in Nuevae. And was praying. Peo Shele. Ni act chap. Bible le fail. Bible ko le seke ni. Oni orno ati aye yo kopya. Su oni ke oni nu orno lono ko le sa ise. Olo Shele ni act chapter 19 verse 11. Oni omo yi, ton fè tori e do bè le bà e. Tori pe bà e lo son, o son se bè. A wò mò mi yò, a wò bòru, bà e lo se son se bè. As she was praying, the baby turned and came out. E tò ti e bà mi lè rù nè sa. The baby came out and held the hand of the matron. Yes, sir. That was assembling the. Well, we are working today, yes, sir. Ogbamu. That is to say, leave my mother. 
Woman daru koke le wadi. Solomon adebara fountain of grace. Wongbo monye wasi church. And the story was so it became a news in the whole of UCH that a tiny baby Terry that he metro on your way jagba osa. When the metro retrieved her hand from the hand of, of, of this tiny baby, she ran out. The baby was crying. The doctor was hearing the, the noise of a baby that was crying. Ni one lost of operation traverse a quick need the mock or multi jadi. Those who want to kill you, they will leave you. <laughs> Finally, of all that we said, power comes by grace. When everything else has been exhausted, grace is never exhausted. Jesus told Paul, said, my grace is sufficient. Owo lema wa sufficient. To wo ba wa sufficient. Dan go ti o sti ni ma wa. To wo ba wa sufficient. Abiola o sti ni ma wa. Opo nkan ninu aye yi. Ni wa sufficient. O se ri grace o ni kan ga ti ki gbe. Be se npo ni o sun. The grace of God. O ni o fi aye sile fun igberaga. Tori e yin na ko ore ofe Olorun ni When we were coming here this morning I saw a walk of grace I didn't plan to say but because of what happened when we were coming out here reverend when we were coming out of our house this morning we saw a girl that was so well dressed and was going to the chapel and mommy was saying Set the light in all the lay by. To dress by. Beautiful. On Loma Jackins or Reverend. Sorry, can it once or see by your own so quick time? Meet it to a job. Mama, a jacking baby, she to marry. Can it once or see by? This motherless baby's home we are running. One can't be any motherless. Who saw Monty on a mother? Condition Lude T or Modi. Sometimes a woman dies, giving birth, the blood did not stop. She dies, they bring the child. For say, really, I want parents here, Gongon Lubiwa, and drop her and left. And the reason they dropped her was because, Reverend, Ejo Yam in the Bible, yes, sir. Bob Boy, at two years, could you buy a lot? We started looking up to God. Then, you know, babies in the in the mother, woman bend by in the boy, and man just scan. And my baby, who cough, they know you are calling us straight now. Oh my cough! It is after they are born they stretch. Ele ko wa stretch. Both a cough, they know you are. Who remain like that? And was growing like that till the head touched the leg. That would be it. Come and cut you rule the baby pillow. You support light with pillow on both sides. If you want to feed the light, you go and look for the mouth down. Now, 
when we have visitors, we will go and hide this girl because he said, we can't nobody understand the disease. He doesn't see, he doesn't talk, and he's growing bent. The grace of God. Ure of snake bite because we live in the bush or a scorpion sting and got there. The other children surrounded the light and the light began to vibrate and stretch. I didn't know and stretching and stretching till she has finished stretching. And the light put her hand down. The hand that looked like broomstick. The legs looked like broomstick. As she was stretched, the hands were forming correct size. The legs were forming correct size. And she stood up and took one leg forward and took second one and walked to mommy and spoke. Go sorry. And also grew to her normal. Mommy, wa mu, amu losi class tawo ebe wa. E sunfun. This is where he belongs. You left her at home, but she's here now. She's there now in school. Sir, I was in London in January to address a conference of doctors and nurses. And I spoke to them about what God does beyond our science. What the power of God can do beyond our sciences. Do you believe? You better believe. The light is there. You can come and see her. And one participant called mommy and said, this girl, I will sponsor her for life. Anytime she's on holidays, she can come to London. Wow. <laughs> Is on her way to London, leaving behind Eddie Decker. There's a shout that accompanies power. 
On the day of Pentecost, there was a shout. There was a mighty rushing wind. As you shout the name of Jesus this morning, the same way there was a shout in our camp. Bobo Ide, Tode Delight, Ode Beresin 2. Bobo Kontoso, Ode Beresin 2. Owa De in your father. Owa Joy in your father. Say, Lord, I be a kicker. Mangled. The limbs are like broomstick. Will God create a human being? Same day. Yes, sir. He did it in the Garden of Eden. If there is anybody who is bound with chains of the adversary, this morning, the God of delight is in champion church this morning to release you from your stronghold. Hear this. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Everybody shout Jesus. Go ahead and shout the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. That's what blind Bartimaeus shouted and he regained his two eyes. Everybody woo. Jesus You have two minutes Two minutes more. Two minutes more. Two minutes more. He do. Maja, 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 Ja, 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 Ja. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous enters therein and he saved. Jesus. Yeah, 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 Receive power, 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 Barbara, 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 Holy Ghost fire. I 
I drive you away. Those of you who are about to die, I drive death away. Go, go away. One more time, raise your voice and shout, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus name we pray it was the second shout that healed blind Bartimaeus the first shout the blind Bartimaeus ikigbe kori ojugba elekeji to kigbe oloro jugba enikan ma ri agbaragba ni gbekeji nto ba le se tele to ba se pe ese re na so nkan yen mo ni gbekeji ya 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 o ma ja ba e o ni lo le bo se wa sa ko se be se wa le se ba pada sa everybody the second shout shout jesus Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Ah. Hey. Oh. Ah. Hey. Yes. 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 Jade. One more time. One more time. Raise your voice. Raise your hand. Shout, Jesus! Hi! Hey! Hey! Yeah! Yes! Oh, yes! Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. Marina, mo pasa e mole si no ju yen. Marina mole, mo de foju ku. Ma wole, Marina, Marina mole, Marina mole, Marina mole, Marina mole, Marina mole, Marina mole, Marina mole. Bedada, Mama, belong oke, ombo ni odore, awangeli, yeah, hey, 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 wo unlo nuwa, ti 
Maliki Ibada Agbara Olorun Sise Sibe E ma gba agbara gba agbara mama ka agbara ni oruko Jesu gba agbara Olorun everybody shout holy ghost fire Shout, Holy Ghost for you. Okay, go. Okay, come long. Okay, Holy Ghost for you. Barbara, 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 Barbara. Barbara, 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 and Mimima. And you see a neighbor, you manifest. You are a prophet, but all the prophecies so that they. Mo pase ba yi Bagbara wa La ti sotele E yi ari ron Ni kena ministry Ti o ro juri La o jure wai Open your mouth and begin to speak in tongues. Begin to prophesy. Open your eyes and begin to see. That's right. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Ma sotele. O today the gift of God has come. Bagbara. Bagbara. In the name of Jesus. Bring out your mantle if you have one. Wave the Sabbath to heaven by the grace we will wave. wave. Receive the mantle of power into your life today. I lay hands on you that you may receive power in the name of Jesus. By this mantle, by this mantle, as it happened in Acts chapter 19 verse 11, I bless the mantle in your hand and I turn it to an instrument of healing. I turn it to an instrument of deliverance. I turn it to an instrument of revival.
Receive the power of God. You are Tomoe. Omono Mari Agbaraba. Agbara Omono wa. Agbara Omode. In the name of Jesus. I fear a chef for me. Lati for me Agbara. I have received authority. You and your daughter. Yes, I don't Yes. In the name of Jesus. Receive power in the name of Jesus. Those who have been threatened by death. Wanyi bon lu olo ju oru. O tao ni ofa. You who even think that you may not live long. Because, e bi e no, but because of the way to say him feel no are. What the very power. I call upon the name of Jesus Christ. On la koko ti awa ni nu re yu. Mama, ye ni wa ye. You will not die. Ma ye oh, ma ye. My my gent, he could to to The things that can kill, that had entered your body, till you walk with Simon. Jade! Ni wo yodo tombo. I wo si wane a yere. Ni wa di olua. Go in this power. You are imparted by the word of prophecy. You are imparted by this mantle. Above all, you are imparted by grace. <laughs> hey. Why are Loni o ogun aye mi se Loni o ogun aye mi se ogun aye mi ti se wole irawo mi jade Loni o ogun aye mi se Loni o ogun aye mi se ogun aye mi ti se wole irawo mi jade Edo Where you two are both going in Malay, they can struggle. But when they can struggle, oh, 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 Today, your struggling is over. Listen to the word of prophecy because there is nothing you are struggling over that somebody somewhere else is not working it out easily.
Loni o o kun aye mi se Loni o o kun aye mi se o kun aye mi ti se Loni o o Lonnie, <laughs> Hey, o kun aye ra ti se wole irawo re jade loni o loni o kun aye ti se hey o kun aye ti se o kun aye mi ti se wole irawo mi jade o kun aye ra ti se wole irawo mi jade o kun aye ti se wole irawo mi jade o kun aye ra ti se wole irawo re jade Hey, I I Hey, I I Hey, I I I I I I Put your hands together for the Lord. You please have your seat, sir. By the grace of God. The experience will not stop in this service. God has started a new thing. And by the grace of God, this fire of the Holy Spirit, nothing will quench it. I said nothing will quench it. And the man of God has been used as God's vessel of honor to speak not to us alone but to speak into our lives. The fire of the spirit, one fire, has divided into several tongues and has landed and settled over every one of our lives. Great results will be coming out of it. It said you must be stirring it up. You must be stirring it up. You must be stirring it up. I'm deliberately keeping quiet because I want it to sink. 
Some people who have the habit of hearing and forgetting, but by the grace of God, it will no longer be so. You must daily be steady. He said, neglect not the gift that is in thee. It's already in you. But if you neglect it, he has told us everything. You will not neglect it. You will be a firebrand for God. You will be a beacon for Jesus. You will fulfill your destiny. Now, more than ever before, the enemy is afraid of you. You are superior to every adversary. The Lord has stirred up and added to the anointing that was in your life before. Where's the amen for that? You don't allow it to get cold. The man of God, I cannot thank himself and his wife enough. The Lord is their reward. The Lord spoke concerning the Levites, even in the Old Testament, they said, because he was their reward. So they were not to be struggling with the inheritance with the people. Especially people were to take care of them. And I know that in a special way, the Lord will be taking care of his messenger. Don't forget those things. Hearing, hearing, hearing. I say that often here. Hearing once is not enough. You have your devices. I don't think there's anybody's device here that cannot store that message. Get it from the studio, store it. So that you can keep hearing it. You can keep hearing it. Because the testimonies that will come out of this conference, by the grace of God, even eternity, the testimonies will be there with you. You will never be the same again. Now you have received the new anointing and he has told us what to do with it. You don't fold your hands and do nothing. As the spirit of God will be directing you, you will be using the, that anointing to destroy the yokes of the enemy. And this came to me as the man of God was ministering. Some of you, you have seen your miracle. It has manifested. Those of you that have not seen it, you will see it. He came to me as he was ministering. There is no such thing as nothing happening when the name of the Lord is used under this kind of atmosphere. So if you have not seen your own, you will see it. Every day you will be thanking God because your own manifestation will come. That's how to do it. I cannot thank the man of God enough. The Lord will continue to help us to thank him and uphold him in life and ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We are not just going to give our offering, but there's going to be a way in which we will say, thank you, Lord, for what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. That one will be a special offering. I don't know how the Reverend Mrs. is going to handle this, but this is not the tithe and offering that we give at the end of the service. That will be there. But the Lord has put it in my heart that we should allow.